Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer on this Friday of the 11th week of Ordinary Time. Our readings today, first from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Uh, he <laughs> kind of goes on and on and on today about all the many things he's endured. You know, all the, the beatings he's uh, endured and the imprisonments and uh, the shipwrecks and the dangers he's faced. And uh, then he talks about boasting. And he says, if I'm going to boast, let me boast about my weaknesses. Okay, he, he wants us to know that, you know, he's got frailties, weaknesses, but what Paul has is an inner strength that comes from God despite his weaknesses. We too are afforded that same gift if we would just accept it, open it up, use it. An inner strength that God provides us when we are at our weak points, when we feel defeated, when we feel like we're um, you know, at wit's end, that's time to say, Lord, help me. Because without you, I'm, I'm losing. But with you, with your help, you give me the strength, the courage, everything I need. So through our weakness, God makes us strong. And that's... <laughs> something we need to really wrap our heads around because it's an important part of living a Christian life because there's a necessary requirement for humility knowing that it's not us it's not our own individual efforts that win anything but it's God's grace and God's might and power working through the people who want to use it, where the victories are won. Look at the victories Paul won. All the churches he established, all the books he wrote, you know, the letters, you know, all a, a large percentage of scripture we owe a debt of gratitude to St. Paul. So, and plus his carrying Christianity, you know, to the outreaches of the then known and inhabited world that we, you know, was that these people in that region were aware of. Of course, there were people living, you know, far and away, but, you know, they were unknown at the time. But St. Paul carried Christianity as far as he physically could um, through his ministry, and he did it all not through his own strength and wisdom, but through everything he received from God. What have you received from God? How about everything? Nothing. Nothing we have comes from anywhere else. Our wisdom, our knowledge, our life, it's all from God. And we just give him thanks and give it back to him. Let him use our lives out of gratitude, thanksgiving for that gift he gave us. Our gospel today, this happens to me all the time. I look at both readings, I get all wrapped up with the first one and then I have to be reminded again what the gospel is. I'm sorry. Getting old, you know, it's just uh, something that uh, uh, something that uh, happens to us all. I have the privilege of getting old, I think. I think I'm looking at it nowadays as just that. It's a privilege, you know. Oh, my God. My security alarm just went off. <laughs> Good boy, Joe. So here's the gospel. This is Matthew's gospel. 
talking about treasures and storing up treasures and reminding us that uh, it's foolish to try to store up earthly treasures. Rather, we need to store up treasures that endure forever. You know, store up the graces that God gives you. Store up your your good deeds, uh, your you're living a life of giving, you know, and in giving away, you're storing treasure in heaven. So it's sort of a, you know, it, it goes against the grain, earthly thinking, but God's ways and man's ways are not the same. And so if you want to store up riches, be giving, be generous. We've talked about generosity earlier this week. Just do that. Give away the treasures and more will be given. We can't outgive God. Whatever we give, we receive back a hundredfold. We'll never have to worry about running out of anything if in our generosity we live a life that reflects God's mercy, compassion, and love. So today, as we thank St. Paul for acknowledging his weaknesses and boasting about them and letting us know that it's only through God that we accomplish anything. And what we, what we can accomplish is only by being a generous, giving, forgiving person. So we give away all of that, and our future is secure. You know what future I'm talking about, too. I'm sure you do. Let's pray our evening prayer, shall we? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, gave birth to a great man, John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Lord. Uh, let me just mention this because you're going to see this theme in our evening prayer tonight. Tomorrow, the 24th of June, is the feast day of the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. So we have the evening prayer reflecting the vigil of this feast. So you're going to see a lot about St. John the Baptist here in our evening prayer as we look forward to the feast tomorrow and we'll talk more about that then praise O servants of the Lord praise the name of the Lord may the name of the Lord be blessed both now and forevermore from the rising of the Sun to its setting may the praise be the name of the Lord high above all nations is the Lord above the heavens his glory who is like the Lord our God who is risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth. From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from his misery he raises the poor. To set him in the company of princes, yes, with the princes of his people. To the childless wife he gives a home, and gladdens her heart with children. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever amen lord jesus word of god surrendering the brightness of your glory you became man so that we may be raised from the dust <coughs> to share your very being <coughs> may there be innumerable children of the church to offer homage to your name from the rising of the sun to its setting Elizabeth, the wife of Zechariah, gave birth to a great man, John the Baptist, who prepared the way for the Lord. 
John, the forerunner of the Lord, was born of an old and childless couple. My soul gives praise to the Lord. I will praise the Lord all my days. I make music to my God while I live. Put no trust in princes, in mortal men in whom there is no help. Take their breath, they, they return to clay, and their plans that day come to nothing. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who alone made heaven and earth, the seas and all they contain. It is he who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free, the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down, the Lord who protects the stranger and upholds the widow and orphan. It is the Lord who loves the just, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God, from age to age. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God of glory and power, those who have put all their trust in you are happy indeed. Shine the brightness of your light on us, that we may love you always with a pure heart. John, the forerunner of the Lord, was born of an old and childless couple. There is no man born of women greater than John the Baptist. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight. He predestined us to be his adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his will and pleasure that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. In him and through his blood we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, a plan to be carried out in Christ in the fullness of time, to bring all things into one in him in the heavens and on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. There is no man born of women greater than John the Baptist. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. According to his promise, God has brought forth from David's descendants, Jesus, a savior for Israel. John heralded the coming of Jesus by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. As John's career was coming to an end, he would say, what you, po what you suppose me to be, I am not. Rather, look for one who comes after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. He who is to come after me existed before me. Make straight his paths. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Zechariah entered the temple of the Lord, and the angel Gabriel appeared to him standing on the right of the altar of incense. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He is he has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. 
He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Zechariah entered the temple of the Lord, and the angel Gabriel appeared to him, standing on the right of the altar of incense. Let us pray joyfully to God our Father, who called John, John the Baptist, to proclaim the coming of the kingdom of Christ. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. You called John the Baptist from his mother's womb to prepare the way of your son. Help us to follow in that path which the Baptist opened before the Lord Jesus. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. May your church, in imitation of the Baptist, fearlessly point out the Lamb of God, so that people in every age may acknowledge that the Lord comes to them. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. John the Baptist did not exalt himself, but acknowledged his role as forerunner of the Christ. Teach us to acknowledge that you are the giver of all our good gifts, and that we must use them in your service. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. You called John the Baptist to give testimony to you by his life, and even in his death. Help us to imitate his unceasing witness to your truth. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. Remember those who have died. Give them a place of light, happiness, and peace. O Lord, guide our feet into the way of peace. Now, let us pray as Christ the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. God our Father, you raised up John the Baptist to prepare a perfect people for Christ the Lord. Give your church joy in spirit and guide those who believe in you into the way of salvation and peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A great night, everyone. A great weekend as well. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow.